Hi, how are you guys doing? My name is Jake, and this is my first YouTube video, Five Things I Wish I Knew Before Coming to Sydney. Number one, Sydney is not even a big city. Let me explain. So if you care, compare it to Beijing, New York, which would be like the benchmark in comparison to a city like Sydney for Australia, Sydney is quite, in a way, underpopulated, but in another way, wide. So you'll have different areas, Burwood, Chatswood, outside of the main CBD Sydney area that have like sprawling buildings. But like if you go immediately outside CBD Haymarket, like the Sydney proper, um, it flattens out quite a bit. So like people say they're from Sydney, but they'll be in like Western Sydney. And it's almost a lot of people compare it to like two cities in one. And that's different to like places like Beijing and New York because it's just a sprawling city that kind of like stays concentrated. But like for Sydney, it'll be like lots of people, lots of buildings here, flans out quite a bit, Western Sydney, Northern beaches, kind of like neighborhoods. It's like neighborhoods and cities within one city, which is quite unique for Sydney itself. Number two, Sydney is a morning city. So if you're coming to Sydney, like I did, and thought it was like nightclubs, like popping every night, like international cities would, would have that kind of like nightlife club culture, but like it's a morning city. So most clubs, they die or close at 3 a.m. And that's just, it might be a consequence of lockout laws, which I'll talk about in another video, but it's also a consequence of the health culture that Australia and Sydney has as well. So if you go to Bondi, at like 5, 6 a.m. It'll actually be more popping, like more people than the CBD on a Friday at like 6 p.m. Like, it, I'll, I'll show footage, like it, it's, it gets pretty dead in Sydney. And that's just a consequence of the health and fitness culture here. Nothing you can do about it. Number three, the different groups of Sydney. So the main groups I'll talk about are local Australians that stay um you'll meet them in uni or you'll you'll meet them around the city they most people who are from sydney will stay in sydney for uni or for work just because the city's that good and another group i'll talk about is chinese or like international people that fly in so that there are air, different areas of sydney that are well known for these kinds of groups so like north shore northern beaches they're like quite well off areas. And these people from these areas, they usually stay within their social groups. And the same can be said about international students. So it doesn't matter like Korean, Chinese, um, maybe Indonesian, like all, all these international groups that come into Sydney, they'll, they'll almost have like their own neighborhoods. So like Chatswood and Burwood's a good example. Um, maybe Strathfield, um, known for being very Korean. And like, it pays, it pays to know what these different areas mean. Because when I first came to Sydney, um, a lot of people were saying like, oh, I'm from Northern Beaches, oh, I'm from the North Shore. And I didn't really know what that meant. So it's like, when I told them, oh, I live next to uni, I live at like in Camperdown, the, the area next to the uni. Kind of like, it's not like they're looking down on me, but it's a little bit of, um, oh, you know? Number four. Postcode slash high school culture. So I was kind of touching on on that. Postcode, like, oh, where are you from? So they kind of like, Sydney is a little clicky and it's a little judgmental as well based on where you live at, as I mentioned. So high school culture. I met um, a few people, but I'll talk about this one story in particular who go to Sydney Grammar. And there was one night I was like studying at the library I was talking to this guy outside, he was having a drag of a cigarette. I was like, oh mate, um, I just moved to Sydney. Um, any recommendations? And we eventually got onto the topic of high school. And this guy, he told me he's from Sydney Grammar, or he went to Sydney Grammar. And he, like, I could have guessed it was a pr prestigious institution, but like, just, just for shits and gigs, I was like, oh, what, what's that? I never heard of Sydney Grammar. And like, he took, the time to like explain to me how 
important, like prestigious it was, and like just to fuck with them. I was like, oh, I've never heard of it. Like, Sydney Grammar? Like, boy, is that like they teach you English there? And like, it was really funny to me how ingrained in his like character, how important it was for me to understand how important his high school was. So to extrapolate, a lot of people in Australia and probably Sydney in general, um, like local Australians will literally care about which high school you went to. And like, even though there are some times where like, I was talking to people, talking to some girls that are like, oh, you look like a, a grammar boy. Like, so it's a part of Sydney culture a little bit, or maybe Australian culture in general. There's like characteristics of like high school and like, oh, if you went to this, like, oh, Rose Bay, if you went to this high school, um, you're usually well off. Or like, if you went to high, this high school in Western Sydney, you're usually like a druggie, like, you, you know how it goes, like stereotypes about different high schools. So when I told them like, oh, I went to, I went to school overseas, I, I don't really know about this high school stuff. I'm like, mm, okay. Like, it is what it is, you know. Number five, so finding an apartment and cost of living in general. So I'd say that finding an apartment in Sydney is probably one of the worst experiences you can go through. When I first got here, I already had student accommodation lined up, but like after I wanted to leave, didn't want to share a bathroom anymore. Um, finding an apartment was like quite, it was quite the challenge. Cause like you'd go to these listings, it'd be like a shoe box in the CBD. It'd be like 10 people trying to, trying to live in the shoe box. And the thing about finding an apartment here is, especially if you go to realestate.com, like go the conventional way, they will literally like, they'll tell you what the rent is, but like they, they kind of, they kind of assume that you're going to pay more than, than the rent. So I might have came at a bad time because there's a lot of rental crises in Sydney, but the listed rent is not the actual rent. The listed rent is more like the bidding price. So obviously the owners want to make more money, but so like they'll have people bid for the rent and it goes up and up and up. And like Sydney's already expensive. It'd be like five, 600 a week even like next to the uni, it's like, it gets pretty, pretty exy if you want to live on your own. So most people, they do share houses and like, they usually split rent and they'll have the same, same apartment, which I didn't want to do. So I had quite the experience, but luckily found a place, works for me in studio and cost of living, touching on cost of living. So the cost of living in Sydney is quite expensive. Um, like if you go to Coles, Woolies, the main places to go to buy groceries and it gets, it gets quite expensive, but like, I would recommend to you guys before moving to Sydney, get a flybys card and start shopping at like Aldi or like Harris farms. So these places like Aldi, it's well known, but like Harris farms, they'll have, um, prices that beat Coles and Woolworths every time. And it, you'll actually get your money's worth. Whereas if you go to Woolies and Coles, um, it, like it looks cheap, but like as you're filling your card up, you, you'll feel the bill at the end. So yeah, those are the five things I hope you guys learn before you come to Sydney. Um, thanks for watching the video and let me know what kind of content you want me to make because um, I've been putting this off for a while. So cheers. <laughs>